All right, Jeff Zimmerman here with one of the youngest hot stars in all of boxing, welterweight sensation, Freddie Rojas. How you doing, Freddie? Good, good. Good to be back. Good to be back. Great to hear your voice again. Appreciate that, man. It's good to see you. Uh, last time Thank we you. spoke, you were making a, you're doing a homecoming in Cosmopolitan yeah. against one of your old, uh, well, not against, but on the undercard of one of your old amateur rivals, uh, Frank Martin, mm -hmm. Cosmopolitan. Yeah. Talk about that experience fighting in, in front of friends and family and uh, continuing your knockout streak. Man, it was great. Like, I don't know. I've, I've, been I've been telling everybody that whole time that I was there. I'm like, I know you guys, like, had to catch it. Like, every time I was smiling throughout the whole thing, throughout the whole fight, like, the coaches were talking to me, but I was, like, staring on the top screen of myself in, uh, on the camera. I'm like, wow, you know, that's so cool. And I kept doing that after each corner. So it was such a surreal moment. And like everybody cheering my name and screaming and stuff and being home and seeing all the fa my family friends in the crowd, which was just great. So the experience for me was just fabulous. And then fighting on the Frank Martin card as well, you know, uh, uh, ex, ex teammates and then ex rivalry. So it was, it was great to, to be on that card together, uh, uh, enjoying it, you know, and both of us getting the wins that night. Did, did you get to have, did you get to talk to him at all? Just kind of reminisce about the old days, um, you know? No, we didn't, time? we didn't, no, we didn't get to talk so much in detail. I think uh, when he was, when I was coming back from my fight, we said what's up to each other before, you know, before we got into the locker rooms and then like, uh, goodbye, man. Uh, good luck, bro. I know you got this. This and that's it. I, I, after that, I didn't, I didn't get to see him because I left out the, the, uh, uh, the venue pretty early, but I was still watching this fight on, on TV. Yeah, he had a tough fight, you know, pulled it out there, you know, obviously got the knockdown towards the end. And I, I remember listening to an interview you did. You actually sparred uh, with his opponent in the amateur. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we, uh, I was getting ready. We were getting ready for world championships back in 2017. And he was the champion in my weight class uh, for at that time it was 141. Uh, so we went down to the Olympic Training Center in Germany, and we were there for a month, and we were sparring with each other, you know. But I was very familiarized with him. Uh, but he's a great dude, very humble guy. Um, uh, but I, I already knew Frank was going to win the type of style that he, he, he fights against his style. But they're both very tough guys. But I've always known like, that the German dude, he's he's also hits very hard as well. So, but, mm. you know, it's, it's, it was – that's what I was, I was telling my dad. I'm like, it's, don't you, that's so crazy, man, that – you know, I fought one and I sparred the other one like a whole bunch of times while we were getting ready in the amateur. So that really does prove how small the boxing community is. Everybody knows everybody. Yeah, it, it is. And I, I tell that to people all the time. I, you know, been in the sport 20 years. We talked about it last time I got started with Richard Still, where you mm -hmm. started at his gym. Um, it, it, even though it's a big world, the boxing world, there's always a connection somewhere. Mm hmm. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So listen, you know, we just got off one of the biggest fights in boxing, uh, Spence Crawford um, in the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, you know, been brewing for about five years. You mm -hmm. picked Bud to win. You've been in camp with Bud. You worked with Bud, but you had to, been, had to have been surprised by how he did it. Yes, yes, and no. I don't because you know I I personally I I felt like well I did say the last time I was like I see it close but I see Bud taking it all the way, um, but how I started seeing the beginning rounds how it was playing off I was like oh man this, this fight's finished Bud already got it, but I I've been telling people from the beginning I thought Bud was gonna win um now, um, I I expected more from Spence now. You know, sometimes fighters have some days that are not like the other days. Um, we could use a prime example for like Frank Martin that one night that, you know, some days are better than uh, some days aren't better than the other days. But, you know, uh, you know, they just had that uh, uh, the rematch clause. Mm. Out, so, you know, I still think. Bud's going to take it out, probably even finish it even earlier. Uh, he already got him familiarized. Uh, so right, we'll see. So even whether it goes to fifty four, you don't you don't see it really changing the outcome. No, I I don't see it changing at all. For the, in that case, I don't think weight was the problem at all. He looked 
of course, you know, every fighter goes through, they each go through their own ways of how to lose the weight and stuff or not. But I wouldn't say, I didn't think Earl was weak or anything because there was times, there was other fights that he's dropped a lot of weight and, you know, didn't mean anything. And Buddy even called it before. He's like, watch when I beat you. People are going to say, oh, you were dehydrated. You were too small, this and this and this. And just how he called it, look what happened. You know, a lot a lot of people, you could say they make excuses or they're bringing up things that are like, oh, well, you know, he was tired or this or this. He had a bad camp. He he lost too much weight, which, you know, uh, sometimes I always say for boxers, it's not so good to put so many excuses. But, you know, I'm, I'm glad that they're making another fight again. Uh, I don't I still see it going Bud's way, regardless if it's a 47 or 54. Mm hmm. And, and to your point, you know, Spence made no excuses to his credit. Um, I've, I've been covering him for years, you know, mm -hmm. and he's, you know, and I've always thought him and Bud were kind of cut from the same cloth, you know, kind of old school a little bit, humble guys, but will speak mm -hmm. when, when spoken to, you know, they'll, they'll yeah. their opinion. And, and I think you saw the respect through their, you know, through the press conferences and so forth, you know, so. Yes. And that's what I love about boxing, you know, despite any all the trash talking and stuff that happens, you know, sometimes fighters say some personal stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, we're all human beings. We're we're all having the same goal. We all want to be a world champion or undisputed champion like that night. So, you know, uh, you know, for fighters, there's always respect for somebody getting into the ring and putting their life on the line sometimes uh, to to give people entertainment or for them to succeed in their career. No doubt. No, well said. Well said. How much better do you feel like you got from sharing the ring with someone like Crawford, who is now considered by everybody pound for Man. pound for one? <laughs> uh, I felt like I got better. It, it, it gave me a big uh, confidence boost, boost at all, uh, boost because, uh, you know, but he gave me some compliments after the uh, sparring and, 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 you know, compliments coming from, you know, you could say the pound for pound king. Uh, it, it means a lot, especially him being in my weight class. So he's the top dog, in, in, you know, for me. And uh, uh, so him giving me compliments on what I do so well and things like that, it it, it really gives me a sure, like, hey, you know, if, if I could do good with this guy, then why should I doubt myself and, mm -hmm. and give him and, and pity myself so little with him? I'm going to fight somebody else, you know? Uh, so it really gave me the more confidence, the more to believe in myself, the more to trust in my team and stuff whenever we go fight these opponents or or just in, in everyday life, really, you know. Mm -hmm. Did you get to experience a camp with them or was more just just sparring a couple times or? It was sparring. We sparred probably about like six, seven times when he was getting ready. Um, but yet again, we were also getting ready for our fight. So it was kind of wasn't aligning. I know they wanted to bring me down as a sparring partner. But I, at that point, I think it would have been better for me to stay more here in Vegas because then I would have to flown over to to the Springs. I think that's where they were at. Okay. Uh, Colorado Springs. So uh, uh, at that point, we just stayed here in, in, in Vegas. But, you know, just getting having that work with them was really great, though. Jesus Ramos just told me because he was in camp with with Bud. You know, mm -hmm. he's got the big fight against Eric, Erickson Lubin on the Canelo Lubin. coming up in your in your backyard. And he said he has never been in a camp like Bud Crawford's. Like he said, we thought we worked hard, we did what we do. And he says he's never experienced the way these guys work and the way and the way they do it together as a team. He said they're now trying to do that. And, and show other fighters as well. I thought it was interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny because, you know, I've known Bud. I won't say I've known, known Bud like that, but I've seen him around when I made the team, when I was uh, 18, when I made the elite team in, on Team USA. You know, he was training there in Colorado Springs, the Olympic training centers in Colorado Springs. So we'll go a lot to his gym and stuff. When he was in training camp, we'll all go down there and see him train. And the dude trains like an animal. And his strength coach, Jamie Belt, you know, he will also say, man, that guy's from a different cloth. Mm -hmm. That dude, like, hey, he he he's strong. He he lives heavy weights. He does this and this and this. And then I believe it because I've, I've seen it time and time sometimes uh, when we will go from them a couple days to go see him train. The dude, the dude's an animal. You know, when he puts his part in the gym, he puts his part in the gym. You know, there's always times you can joke around and crack jokes and stuff. But when there's time to work, he's working. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting, you know, especially when you saw it when you were a young, you know, mm -hmm. coming up guy, and you're still young. But um, we were talking about Frank Martin a little bit. Um, I, I believe there's a purse bid. 
out there for him to fight Shakur. Now we know his last mm. fight was a, his last fight was a little tough, but he, he got through it. Which sometimes you, you just got to grind it out, right? How does yeah. that fight play out? Oh gosh, I I think I think Shakur will take it all the way. I love Shakur. Shakur's a really great fighter. I mean, the dude's so disciplined. His timing's unbelievable. You know, um, uh. We, Sometimes it's like he'll throw fast and then he'll throw slow. That will leave you like, what the heck just happened? You know, did I really just get hit with that? Um, but no, he's he's a great fighter. I think I I don't think it'll 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 get finished, but I do think he'll go all the rounds. I, I'll say the same thing what I said with the Earl and and and, uh, and Bud. I think it'll go all the rounds, but I do I do think it's going to be an outclass from Shakur Stevenson for sure. Okay, and then you also, I've heard you mention, you, you know, and again, you're in the fight capital of the world um, in Vegas, in your hometown. You, you've been in the ring with Boots. Now, yeah. we don't know what Spence Crawford, 154, but they're, you know, they're kind of on the other side of their career. Boots mm -hmm. is still young. You're, you're, on, you're on the rise. Um, what was that experience like? And uh, is he the next thing at 147 besides you? You know, uh, people have been asking me that, and I do believe so. The, the 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 guy is a very talented guy, you know, getting in the ring with him. You know, it was a great, great sparring. You know, we both were laughing and talking in the ring, you know, athletes being athletes, as you could say. Uh, but he's such a tremendous fighter. You know, I give him all credit and respect. You know, he's trained so hard his whole life to get where he's at now. And I do believe he is the one big next thing. Like uh, I was telling people, you know, but in Crawford, they're getting older, they're gaining weight, you know, there's it's their time to go up. And by all means, go, go, go. You know, I don't mind. Go, you just go, go to 54. Uh, mm -hmm. Make my job easier, you know. Um, uh, but no, I do believe he'll be one of the the big uh, uh one of the big things up there in, in the uh, weight class at 147 as long as me. Now, and, and again, you shared the ring, you know, sparred with Crawford too. What what would a Crawford boots fight look like? <laughs> A firework fight for sure. I mean, both of them guys are really, really smart. They both hit tremendously hard. Um, and they're both thinkers, you know. They're always thinking constantly in the ring, and they're really, really good listeners to their coach. So whatever their coach is telling them, they're they're listening very well, which is very important in an athlete because, you know, they see something that we're not seeing. More more chess than checkers, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, a lot of chess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, listen, let me, and we'll wrap it up here in a few minutes. Um, I'm here with Freddie Rojas, got a big fight September 15th in San Antonio, coming to Texas. I mm -hmm. uh, wish, wish it was here in Dallas, but uh, you, you're fighting a guy, uh, Saul Bustos. He's only got one loss, 15, one and one, eight KOs. Hadn't fought in a couple of years, but you're fighting guys. It seems like you're, you're, you're going in the right direction, fighting guys, undefeated guys that been around. Um, what what do you know about him, and um, what is, what does he bring, you know, to kind of enhance, your, you know, your level? And uh, so, you know, he's training. He tr he's training with one of the best coaches in the world right now. He's training with Fred Roach. Mm. So, you know, he he has one of the best coaches in his corner. I mean, he only has a year layoff, I believe. Um, you know, he 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 has a good record. He's been there for the minute uh, for a good time. I know he's a great great fighter. Um, these are the fights that we want, you know, uh, these type of fights is to prove to people that I belong, that I, you know, I'm not some type of pushover that just made it here by luck, you know. Uh, I trained my whole life for for this opportunity or for opportunities like this, I can say. And and and, I, and now that I've gotten it, I want to prove to people that I, that I belong. I'm just not just here just to mess around and just get it by luck, you know. Um, so, you know. We want these tough fights. We want we want guys who come put us pressure. We want people to box us. We want every type of style. Um, but no, uh, uh, like I said, he's a tremendous fighter. I think people uh, beating him would give another uh, people to zip their mouth up. You know, even though there's some in, in boxing or in, in any type of sports, there's always going to be people saying something. But as long as I know that I'm correcting myself and I'm getting better and better as long as the way go on. That's all that matters. You know, at the end of the day, I'm receiving the punches, not that. <laughs> right. uh, so, you know, uh, you know, as long as I put a good fight, I listen to what my coach is doing and get the victories like we should, 
like we've been training for, you know, I know it's going to be a great fight and I know I'm going to do my job in there, but no, I know he's a great fight, uh, a great fighter, you know, doubt. And I think he has an amazing record. And I think it's a, you know, obviously he has a better record than I, uh, but you know, this uh, boxing is about testing yourself. You know, a lot of these, uh, we say a lot of these fighters are scared uh, to scared of getting, getting rid of their O's, like you say, right. Putting their O on the line. But you know, if we want to go like back in the day, you know, they fought with the versus the best, and to only get better is to fight the best. You know, so that's that's the plan. What me and my my team have to fight the best, to give ourselves challenge in fights because we could get fights that are easy if we wanted to push around the beat and you know maybe and fall on and get a world title and get it that way. But no, that's that's not something we want to prove to people that we are a fighter that we can hang in there with the best and that we're gonna beat the best. So uh, no, you know, that I think that's. That's the main purpose of why we show, uh, why why we're fighting this guy and why we do believe that he'll give us a great fight and a great learning experience as well. Well, and, and for one, it doesn't look like you've taken m many punches throughout your life, you know, looking <laughs> at that, that clean face. But no, it definitely yeah. feels like there's a shift going on. And I was talking to, you know, I mentioned Jesus Ramos earlier. The 154 division has just been on, you know, heating up like crazy. Mm -hmm. Carlo fought in Canelo. You got... Uh, Jesus Ramos fighting Erickson Lubin now Lubin. Uh, uh, fighting um, uh, Tim Zhu. Tim Zhu. Yeah. So, I, and I think it actually makes guys like you bigger. You know, kind of that throwback mentality, willing to risk mm -hmm. the O. So, do, do you feel a shift amongst the fighters that hey, let's just fight? I do. I I think uh, people are getting rid of that Mayweather era, kind of keeping the O, trying to stay safe about it. Um, you know, which is good because, you know, like I said, boxing is about fighting with the best and the best and to prove to, to the world that you are the best, you're number one and you're the champion. Um, so I do believe there's a shift because now you're seeing that people, fighters aren't really afraid, you can say afraid to fight with people who have other O's or, or who is a champion and stuff like that. You know, they want to prove themselves, get their name out there and say, hey, look, I can hang in there with this guy too, you know. And uh, yeah, but I do think there's a big shift happening right now in boxing in the, in, the, in a good way. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think the fans, one of the best years in boxing, and it just seems to get better and better. Um, yes. No doubt. And we'll wrap it up here in a second. Um, I, I wanted to ask you something. I was just thinking about this earlier today. You're promoted by Samson. Um, mm -hmm. I met Samson, God, 20 years ago. Uh, he had fighters on a Richard Steele card off, off the strip in Vegas. And uh, he also promotes Fundora. You're six two. You're lean, but I mean, I don't know how long you're going to stay at one forty seven. Would you ever get in the ring with Fundora? Do you ever? Do you ever see that happening? You know, this is boxing. Anything can happen. If I go up and wait, man, I would love to fight Fundora. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, uh, we've known Fundora and his fans for a long time. They're very great people and stuff like that. Uh, like what they say, but business is business. You know. Uh, ultimate goal is to be a world champion but if he comes along the way and he's in my way then then then, then and that's the fight i had to take then that's the fight that i had to take but if he's not then yeah I'm, I'm willing to get in the ring with him and, and get some couple fights uh but now you, you know that dude's tall so right the one <laughs> and, time you know, you're not... yeah. yeah yeah the one time i'm not i'm used to being super tall for my weight class uh so imagine with him at 54 so no but no if if he's if I, if I, whenever I go up, I say, because uh, I say it's only a matter of the time. I'm still growing. I'm still developing as a fighter. It's only a matter of time. Uh, but if he's along the way that I have to fight him and he's a mandatory, then I have to do it. You know, that's that's my job. Business is business at the end of the day. Uh, we could be friends after the fight. Absolutely. And he, and he's a good dude, no doubt. Yeah, um, great dude. Let, let me ask you this. Um, there's a lot of talk about Spence, you know, and, and because, you know, you being a Southpaw, taller guy I mean Spence isn't that tall but against Crawford he was considered the the taller bigger guy that his feet mm -hmm. were far apart that he kind of took away his height against Crawford did you notice that and, and is that a real thing that yes it is it, I didn't notice that and it's a real big thing because the coaches my coaches even uh you know they used to talk to me back in the day when I used to do that so the thing is when you're tall right you don't want to open your legs too much. It feels, don't get me wrong, it feels comfortable because you feel like, oh, okay, I got more leverage. But you shorten your height, though. So instead of me 6'2", and I have my legs wide open, 
I could be uh, six feet exactly, or I can even be 5'11". So it is a disadvantage when you do that. So the thing is to keep your feet a little bit more closer and taking baby steps and taking, instead of taking some big lunges. And plus taking them baby steps, when your feet are closer apart, you're you're setting up things more easier than or, – or you can hit harder for punches than having your feet wide open. Got it. Got it. Interesting. Good, great analysis. Uh, let's get some quick predictions from you. Um, <laughs> Freddie here with Freddie Rojas, Jeff Zimmerman here, uh, Charlo Canelo. Um, how does that fight play out? Canelo. I, I say Canelo, but I, I, I've been loving Canelo for a long time. Uh, you know, Mexican heritage. Uh, I think, I think, you know, people in Houston might hate me because everybody loves the Charlo <laughs> there and I'm currently living there, but I do believe Canelo, Canelo is going to pull it off. I think, uh, I feel like the fight will be over under, under 10 rounds. To be honest, mm -hmm. uh, either a, yeah, I think it'll be like more of a TKO uh, type of stuff, but I do believe he's going to stop Charlo. Okay. And since I just interviewed Jesus and he's, he's the co-main, how, how, how do you see him and Erickson Lubin, another warrior? Uh, yeah, I actually, I actually see a, a, a Jesus win in this one. You know, he's a, he's a strong dude. Very, very, very strong guy. You know, he keeps coming forward. And, you know, sometimes for fighters, they don't like that. <laughs> especially if, especially for boxers, they don't like fighters who keep coming forward and forward and forward and forward. So he is a tough dude. I know he keeps coming. So if if Lubin makes a mistake and lets him keep coming forward and or stop throwing a jab or something, Jesus is really going to take control. But I think Jesus is going to win. But, uh, but I see that one going all the way. Okay. And, and last one, uh, Tim Zhu and uh, Brian Mendoza. Oh. Which Another fireworks type of fight. Yeah. I think Mendoza. Mendoza hits very hard. He's very technical. He's working with one of the best coaches, Salas. So I know Salas is working with him extremely, extremely well. So I know they're going to be working a lot with movement and, 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 and counters and stuff like that. So, But I think, uh, think Mendoza is going to take it all the way. Um, close fight, though. I think of it's going to be a close fight. But I do see him taking it away. Outboxing out him is what it sounds like. Yeah, I, I feel like he's going to be outboxing. I don't think he's going to try to try to sit there and bang with him. You know, yeah. I don't think that would be a good idea. But I think he'll he'll just be outboxing him and keeping him on the outside the whole time. All right, and what can we expect? You talked about Bustos trained by the the, the great Freddie Roach. Um, what should we expect September fifteenth in San Antonio against uh, Saul Bustos? Uh, I would just say you'll see a great fight. You'll be seeing two Mexican heritage. Hello? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, I'd say I think that we've seen two Mexican heritage boys going really at it. Uh, at the end of the day, you'll see a lot of uh, power punching and a lot of lateral movement from Freddy Rojas. And, uh, you know, and then you're going to see me with my hand raised by the end of the day, God first. And uh, as I've been telling people, you know, it's uh, Freddie Roach. He may be one of the best coaches in the world, but at the end of the day, it's up to the fighter's job. And they're going to listen. He's going to listen to what he does. And Freddie Roach isn't going to go in there and fight for him. So, right. and neither is my coach. <laughs> so at the end of the day, you know, I'm going to do my job and I'm, I'm going to come victorious that night. But no, there's going to be an action packed fight that night. And so everybody make sure to tune in. Well, you heard it here. Freddy Rojas, rising welterweight stars, been in there with some of the best in the world, particularly Bud Crawford. Uh, you know, can't ask more than that. The number one pound for pound guy. Freddie, best of luck. Uh, September 15th, Thank you. San Antonio, Texas. And uh, we'll be watching and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me again. I really do appreciate it. All right, man. Take care. All right. Take care. Thank you.